Carrie, thanks so much for coming on the Entrepreneur Fitness Podcast today. So happy to have you on. How are you doing today? I'm great, Brandon. How are you? I am doing excellent. Um, do you want to give my audience a brief little intro of yourself? I already did a little one just before we started this uh, conversation, but you might be able to add something they are particularly interested in. Well, you've probably told them that I'm a functional medicine doctor and that I practice up in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And uh, I have uh, I have two basset hounds that I've rescued, so I'm hoping you don't hear them on our podcast today. Oh my god, I love basset hounds! It's my favorite dog. I usually have one sleeping right at my feet, and sometimes she starts snoring. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so it's really cool. cute. Uh, awesome. Well, um, let's hop into it. So I had you on the show today because I'm very interested in you know a lot of the things that you study. So. I, I mostly have entrepreneur listeners, right? And their number one priority is energy, as is mine. You know, it's the one resource that we can never get enough of because really our businesses are on our backs. And if we don't have the energy and we don't have the juice and the gas in our tank to keep us high energy and moving forward, then our businesses don't move and we're not going to get the satisfaction out of any of the process that we would otherwise. So I'd love to talk to you about uh, a few things that have to do with energy in our bodies. Uh, the first thing I want to talk to you about are like the major micronutrients that you see a lot of people that are deficient in that are leading to low energy levels. So as we get started with this, Brandon, I just want your listeners to know that I am also, as a doctor, I'm also an entrepreneur. So I'm right out there. I'm right with you out in the trenches myself. I run, run my own practice, and, and I do know how important it is, personally, how important it is to have good energy and how important that is for my business and my, for my practice. So one of the, some of the very common nutrient deficiencies that I see, I see a lot of uh, vitamin D deficiencies. Probably a lot of that is because I'm in Canada and and we only have summer like two months of the year. Mm -hmm. And then uh, B12 is a huge one also. And the third that I, I commonly find is magnesium. Awesome. Okay, so I want to <laughs> go through each one of these. Would you mind if I ask you, I'm just going to grill you, spit fire questions about a few of these, okay? Yeah, let's go. Um, so vitamin D, uh, of course, like, okay, I live in Austin, Texas. We get lots of sun. But where is the balance of like going out and, uh, you know, sitting in front of the sun and weighing the risk of like skin cancer versus, you know, just taking a pill? Like what would you recommend? People go out in the sun try to, and try to soak it up or people like pop a pill to get vitamin D? You know, that's a great question and one that a lot of people wonder about. I, I was at a seminar last year from uh, Grassroots vitamin D council and uh, and what the leading experts had said is that we get more benefit from having the vitamin D in our body and that actually helps protect us against a lot of different cancers including skin cancer but of course you don't want to go crazy in the sun either so the thing is the the sun rays that help you make vitamin D are the are the same rays the UVB rays that make you burn and then give you, you know, skin cancer. So what they have found is in the research, so the best time of day to get vitamin D from the sun is when it's at its strongest, which is usually like between noon and one. So think about like the shadow that you cast, your shadow should be shorter than you are tall. And that means that the sun is directly overhead at its strongest. And really all, all, all you need is about five or 10 minutes worth of that strong sunshine without any sunscreen now because sunscreen is going to block that. But all you need is about five or 10 minutes and your body can easily make 20,000 units of vitamin D all on its own. Wow. So as long as you're not like getting burned, which most people within 10 minutes, even if you have very fair skin, because I personally have very fair skin too, even within 10 minutes, you're usually pretty good at, you, you know, you're not exposing your skin long enough that it's going to start to burn. Okay, that's good to know. So, what what do you say to people who are living up in Canada, maybe who don't get as much sun? What kind of what kind of recommendations do you usually make for them? Well, I test every single patient that comes into my office gets tested for vitamin D, and I find routinely I'm going to say like ninety eight percent of them are low, 
And so what I end up doing is I end up giving them vitamin D supplements because in Canada, we just, we don't have enough great weather to be out in the sun. So that's the other part of it that I didn't even talk about. You have to have at least half of your skin exposed Mm -hmm. in order to get that vitamin D from the sun. So like being shorts and a t-shirt or your bathing suit. And here in Ottawa, I mean, basically we have July and August that we can do it get our vitamin D from the sun. But the reality is, especially for the listeners that are entrepreneurs, a lot of us are inside at our desk in front of our computer. We're like eating lunch while we're working. And even if we have great weather, a lot of people don't aren't willing to take that five or 10 minutes to go outside. And so that's where supplements come in because you, we just cannot get enough vitamin D from food sources alone. Yeah. So when, it, when you come to supplementation, I'm really curious. Uh, so of course you can go to Target, right? Or I don't know, if, well, any like random store and you can get like- Target or yeah, Costco. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can get those kind of like supplements. But I, I hear there's a big difference between like your generic, like very cheap supplement versus, you know, the higher quality, higher end ones. Can you talk to that a little bit? I can. So the, the higher quality supplements are considered pharmaceutical grade. They're usually only sold through doctor's offices. So what this means, Brandon, is when, when the manufacturer, let's say with their vitamin D, let's say they get a barrel of vitamin D into their facility, a really great manufacturer will test every single barrel that comes in to make sure that first, it actually is vitamin D. And second, that it's not contaminated with anything. And so when they find a product that's contaminated, they'll say, no, we don't want this ingredient. In our case, we're, we're saying vitamin D. We don't want this ingredient. You know, take that away. We're not accepting that. Well, that guy is going to just take that barrel and sell it to somebody else mm-hmm. who does not do any testing. Mm. So that's one of the big differences. And, and that's, frankly, that's why. Um, supplements that are considered pharmaceutical grade are more expensive is because in the end you're paying for all the extra testing and then once they manufacture that that pill or that capsule they also do testing after to make sure that if that if it's supposed to have a thousand milligrams of vitamin c in it that it actually does have a, a thousand milligrams mm-hmm. not more not less so so when it comes to buying supplements Usually you are better off with, with, you know, getting what you pay for in a sense that if you do buy a better, you know, a more expensive supplement, you're usually getting a better quality, but you're really, the safest bet is to get something that is pharmaceutical grade and sold through a doctor's office. I'm really curious. You may not know the answer to this because the research may not have been done, but has any research been done on like just taking generic supplements off the shelf of like grocery stores and things of that sort and comparing them to pharmaceutical grade and seeing, you know, what kind of uh, discrepancies there are between uh, how potent these drugs are. Oh, yeah. You know, there's a whole website that that's all they do. Oh, I'm trying to remember what that is. You know, I, it's not coming to my brain right now. A Consumer yeah. Awareness Council or something like that. I'll find it for you awesome. and I'll, I'll make sure that you have it so you can stick that in the show notes. But yeah, that's basically all that they do. They'll go around and let's say with uh, probiotics, for example, they'll get take all kinds of different probiotics off the shelf and they'll test and see, okay, does this have what it's supposed to have, what it says on the label? And a lot of the probiotics that are on the shelf actually have hardly any live active bacteria in them. Oh, okay, yeah. So it's much like, um, I saw a, a current study just came out, and maybe it didn't just come out, but it came out a few months ago or so, and it was about uh, organic food versus conventional food, and like the organic food was said to have like three times more nutrients in it than the normal food. So you really do get what you pay for, I guess, in, in, in every circumstance. Yeah, and even with organic food, like, of course, uh, of course, food is your best medicine, and, and as a doctor, I like to recommend food as their first, you know, and, and then like a supplement second. But, you know, when you think about, okay, organic food does cost more, but you're getting more for your money because it does contain significantly, significantly 
uh, stronger amounts of nutrients. So you eat that food and you actually get full faster, mm -hmm. which means you eat less of that food. And yeah. so I, I actually, in the end, organic food, and, th and this has been studied, organic food is actually cheaper in the end. Makes sense. Makes sense. So everyone out there, buy your organics. Buy your organics. It's worth it. Uh, so I'd love to move on to talking about B12 now because B12 is something, yeah, I mean, B12 shots are really popular here in the, in the U.S. I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts on B12 and why it's so important for energy levels. So, um, so B12 is required for all, all kinds of different areas of your body, especially your brain and your nervous system. And one of the most common reasons for fatigue that I see is because the B12 is on the low end. And so one of the things when it comes to testing B12 is what, you know, they, the normal range varies from lab to lab. So nobody has really, you know, sat down and said, like, this is actually what the normal range is. Nobody has agreed on that. And one of the very interesting uh, papers that they did, they took a group of patients they drew their blood to test their B12, and then after that, they tapped their spine and they tested their cerebral spinal fluid to see how much B12 was in their cerebral spinal fluid. And what they realized was that even though the B12 in the blood can look normal, it can be significantly decreased within the nervous system. And so in this paper, it said that your B12 should be at a minimum of 600 within your bloodstream. And so when patients come in to see me, along with testing their vitamin D, I'm always looking at what their B12 number is, and they're usually in like the 200s. Oh, wow. So in general, people are very deficient. Yeah, they really are. And, and so our best source of B12 diet-wise uh, comes from animal foods, things like uh, shellfish and clams and uh, seafood liver and organ meats, and then any kind of red meat. So anybody that's out there that's a vegetarian or vegan, you probably already know that you should be supplementing with B12. But what you don't know is you probably need to be supplementing with more B12 than you are right now. Mm. Okay. Interesting. And so uh, what about, how do you feel about getting B12 from like, I mean, it's, it's in some dairy products too, isn't it? Yeah. Like I said, all animal, all animal foods, or mm -hmm. all foods that come from animals, I should say, uh, have B12 in them. And some will have more than others. And you can do a really quick internet search and just, you know, type in the keywords of, you know, what are the foods that are, have the best source of B12, and you'll get like the top 10 foods. So yeah, dairy does have some B12. Mm -hmm. So, and I was curious, what kind of like uh, <clears throat> perceived effects do people have? I mean, do you have uh, patients who come in deficient in B12 and then you get their levels up and they come in and you're like, wow, like I am noticeably like I feel different. Like this is a big difference for me. Or is it more something that is something they experience maybe through their biomedical markers and they don't actually perceive it as much? Sometimes it's a very strong reaction and sometimes it's more subtle. A lot of the patients that I'm seeing are, are pretty complicated and, and it's not only a B12 deficiency that's going on, but what I do see is their energy gets better and their brain function is better. So they have, uh, it's easier for them to concentrate. They have a better memory. And then a lot of patients also tend to have a lot of aches and pains in their back and their muscles and joints. And B12 is really important for the musculoskeletal system too. So they'll feel better uh, from a musculoskeletal standpoint too. Okay, interesting. Uh, I would love to hear as well, uh, talk to me about magnesium. Because I don't know that much about magnesium. And I'm sure a lot of listeners don't either. Why is magnesium so important? So magnesium is a mineral. And it's actually one of the most important minerals in our body. From a purely biochemistry standpoint, we need magnesium in for over 350 different reasons in the body. So, you know, everything in your body is a chemical reaction that happens. And so in order to make those chemical reactions move faster, that's why we require magnesium. Yeah. And so... I think it was back in the 20s or the 30s that they started saying that 
in general, our uh, in North America, our our soil where we grow all of our fruits and vegetables, our soil is depleted in a lot of minerals, especially magnesium. And now they're saying that like 85% of the population has a magnesium deficiency, but but it's hard to find a magnesium deficiency on a blood test. So um, for the listeners out there that might have like copies of their blood work, they might see uh, a magnesium test on there, but you would have to really be critically ill in order for that number to get out of balance. Mm. So, so more or less magnesium deficiency can go on and on for months and months and years and years as a chronic thing. And in some of the kind of the classic signs of magnesium deficiency would be um, cramping in your um, legs or feet, cramps or charley horses, um, tight muscles, like some people will go to the massage therapist or the physical therapist and they'll be like, man, you're just like, you're so tight all over. That can be a magnesium deficiency, actually. Mm. And then uh, grinding your teeth or uh, clenching your teeth while you sleep at night. That's very classic for a magnesium deficiency. And then the if you have twitching of any muscles in your body, like sometimes I'll get twitching around my eye and it'll just drive me nuts. And I know I need to take more magnesium. And then the last one is craving chocolate. Because chocolate is that dark chocolate is actually a good source of magnesium. Interesting. So in general, if you people want to maximize their energy um, and they didn't want to go to the doctor and go get a blood test done and find out everything they're deficient in, would you say B12, vitamin D, magnesium? Uh, would you add anything else to a list of like supplements that you feel like everyone should be supplementing to the diet? Well, you could easily supplement with B12 and magnesium because those are water soluble and they're not going to build up in your body. If you get too much, you're just going to pee it out. Mm -hmm. um, now, vitamin D, you do have to be more careful of because that's a fat soluble vitamin. So it has the potential to become toxic in your body. And so something like that, it would, it would be good to have yourself tested and so for your listeners out there, if they don't have a doctor or they can't afford a doctor, there's actually labs that are online that you can find and you can uh, order uh, a test for vitamin D that actually just involves a finger prick. Just prick your finger, put some drops of blood on a card, send it off to the lab. And, and these are very reputable labs. And so that's a way if you don't have a doctor that you can have your vitamin D tested. And so, okay, so you were asking if there's anything else. So one of the new things that I've been um, really learning more and more about lately is iodine deficiency. I, I really had no idea that the vast majority of us are deficient in iodine. Mm -hmm. And, of course, that can cause fatigue, too. Okay. You could talk to us about iodine a little bit. Where can we get it? Um, what, are, yeah, what are some of the side effects of being deficient into it? in iodine and yeah why should we why should we care about iodine talk to us so iodine is required for all of the glands in your body like we typically think of the thyroid gland first but it's also required for the ovaries and testicles the pancreas the pituitary the um the pine uh, the salivary glands <laughs> I was having a bit of a brain uh, block there so yeah all the glands in your body require iodine and the best sources of iodine are actually uh, sea vegetables, also known as seaweed. So if you're, if you're the type of person that really loves uh, sushi, you know, the green seaweed paper that they wrap it in, that's actually where you're getting the best source of iodine from. And then we can also get iodine from fish and seafood. And then we do get a little bit from regular iodized table salt, although it's not really a great source for us. But yeah, where we live in North America, if you're not if you're not eating a whole lot of seaweed and sea vegetables, chances are you're deficient in iodine. Mm -hmm. Okay, and is that something that's traditionally tested um, when you go to like get a micronutrient test when you go to the doctor or are there places you can get tested for this? Yeah, that is something that's not tested very traditionally. I mean, usually doctors will test the like do a thyroid test, mm -hmm. but no, they're not traditionally testing 
um, iodine levels. And so one of the ways that we can test for iodine is through the urine. And so you'll submit like the first morning urine sample, send it off to the lab, and uh, they'll they'll be able to see how much urine, how much iodine you're excreting in your urine. So if you're not excreting a whole lot, that means in your body you, you don't have a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. So a lot of times I think uh, you know busy people in general always want the eighty twenty for what they should be consuming. You know, be it a lot of people just consume. I think multivitamins and maybe fish oil because those are the ones that have been, you know, driven home so many times by just like mass pop culture, like the things that you just take every day. Um, what would you say are the 80-20 for the, the supplements that people should be consuming if they want to maximize their energy and overall health? That's a really great question. So definitely a, a high quality multivitamin and fish oil. So as you said, those that really is a good base to start with. And then on top of that, vitamin D if you need it for sure, Uh, B12, B12 to to get your numbers above 600, and uh, magnesium. And, you know, we didn't talk about supplementing magnesium, but it's very easy to supplement magnesium. Basically, the best form of magnesium is magnesium glycinate, and then the second best is magnesium citrate. Those you can easily find at a good health food store. And so what you do is every day you take one capsule more. So one capsule more every day until you have diarrhea. Really? So that's your body's, oh. that's your body's like natural overflow valve. Mm-hmm. And so once that happens, you kind of like you've hit the roof of how much your body can absorb. So you just back it off by one or two capsules. And that's how much magnesium you should take. And frankly, Brandon, I've had some patients where they need six capsules a day. I've had some patients where they need nine capsules a day. I had one who was up to 13 capsules and still she did not have diarrhea. Mm. So that's a very easy one to supplement with. And also with magnesium, what I find is a lot of people will sleep better through the night. So, you know, we're talking about how to how we can get more energy and of course you need to get good sleep and unfortunately I think a lot of entrepreneurs kind of have this mindset of like I'll I'll sleep when I'm dead Mm -hmm. but that's not good that's not good for your business that's not good for your brain so magnesium can actually help you sleep better at night and help you sleep deeper and so by by doing that you know that is going to help your concentration, your memory, your creativity, that's going to help all different parts of your business and your health and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Have you, are you familiar with like ZMA, the ZMA supplement? No, I am not. You're not? Okay. I think it's, it's like a, it's a sports supplement. I know it has zinc and magnesium. I'm trying to think what the last micronutrient they put in there is, but it's also really, I mean, it's, it's, it's very popular for athletes to help them recover and to increase energy levels. Um, But yeah, so I wanted to pick your brain about like zinc. Like I know that zinc is also a big micronutrient for energy. Um, Do you want to talk about zinc at all? I'd just love to hear your your point of view on it. Yeah, you're right, zinc. Zinc is another one that, unfortunately, the truth is there's a lot of nutrients that we're deficient in. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I'm glad you brought up zinc. That's another big one that's required for energy production. One of the very classic uh, symptoms of zinc deficiency is having a poor sense of smell or a poor sense of taste. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is if you look at your fingernails and you see um, white spots on your fingernails, that's very classic for zinc deficiency as well. Mm, Okay. Do you have white white spots on your fingernails, Brandon? I just looked right now. I was like, (laughs) oh, I see a few spots. I do. Maybe I need to get some more zinc in my system. Yeah, there, and there's actually a, a zinc taste test that some doctors do that they have you drink a solution of zinc. And if you, if you cannot taste anything, that means you're deficient in zinc. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting. But yeah, yeah, zinc is a very common deficiency. Um, one that not a lot of doctors test for, you could do a, a zinc a blood test. Uh, one of the things that I do in my practice is I look at the uh, the alkaline phosphatase, which is a liver enzyme, and we need zinc in order to make alkaline phosphatase. So if that 
number is on the low edge of the normal range, I know I'm pretty confident that they're low in zinc. Okay, good. All right. Well, I think we got a ton of uh, information to digest from the session. So I just wanted to kind of review everything we've talked about here um, and kind of go back through and make sure everyone is absorbing all this. So uh, magnesium, B12, vitamin D, uh, including fish oil, multivitamin, a really high quality multivitamin in your in your supplementation, and uh, making sure that you're getting really high quality um, supplements when you're doing it instead of just you know trying to get a cheap supplement that maybe doesn't have the amount of nutrients in it that it would otherwise if you actually invested in getting a good supplement. Is there anything you want to add that I may have missed from uh, from our interview today? Actually, I was just thinking um, of, of telling your listeners about the vinegar test. I don't know if you've ever heard of the vinegar test, Brandon. I haven't. Go ahead. So it's a, you know, a lot of, a lot of people wonder, like, if their supplements are even dissolving, you know, if they're doing anything for them. And so the vinegar test is a way that you can, you can test your supplements to see if they dissolve or not. Because one, one of the things is that on x-ray... We can see, you know, pills on X-ray that are stuck in the intestines that have not dissolved, mm. and uh, and and there are um, tales of supplements being uh, being uh, excreted into the toilet, yeah, full, you know, like not dissolved at all. Yeah. And so uh, the vinegar test is a way to see if your supplements dissolve. So what you do is. All you need is plain old white vinegar, which you probably have in your pantry. And so the pH of uh, plain vinegar is about two or two and a half. And when it comes to your stomach acid, the pH in your of your stomach acid is usually between one, one and a half or three. So the pH of vinegar kind of like is in that same range. So what you can do is put your tablet, let's say your multivitamin, put your multivitamin tablet in a glass top it off with some white vinegar, set your timer for 30 minutes. And if at the end of 30 minutes, that tablet is completely dissolved, that's, that's good. Chances are that's going to dissolve in your stomach. But if at the end of 30 minutes, that tablet is still like rock hard and nothing has happened to it, chances are that's going to end up straining your toilet. Okay. Well, good to know. I think it's a good test that we're going to do. And then you, you can actually see, okay, are my supplements dissolving or am I, or am I just flushing money down the toilet, no pun intended, of course. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I've had a lot of people do this. I've done this myself, and I've been shocked at even some of the high-quality supplements that still do not dissolve. Interesting. Okay, cool. That's a great thing I think uh, you guys should all try out because I had no idea about that, but super cool. Well, Carrie, is there anything uh, else you want to add to my listeners before we wrap things up here? Um, let's see, if, if you want to know more about, um, about fatigue and the underlying causes of fatigue, I do have a book that I wrote. It's called Reclaim Your Energy and Feel Normal Again, Fixing the Root Cause of Your Fatigue with Natural Treatments. And in that book, I do talk about the, the common nutrient deficiencies, the ones that we talked about today, Brandon, mm -hmm. B12 and vitamin D and magnesium. But then I go into all of the other underlying causes for fatigue also. So if any of the listeners out there want more information, they can get my book. And it's available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle forms. And then they can also go to my website and get it too, which is at drcarry.com. Awesome. Beautiful. All right. Well, I will definitely put the link to that in the show notes so you guys can grab it. Um, after you listen to this interview. And uh, Carrie, thanks so much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate you sharing your knowledge and teaching us all how important it is to supplement our diets with the proper micronutrients. You're welcome, Brandon. Thank you for having me on. All right. Bye-bye now. Bye.